me the next time we're leaving. I didn't know we were going anywhere. Well, I didn't trigger the Omni. Neither did I. Where are we? The Omni isn't responding. Bog looks around and realizes he knows this place. Hey, nothing to be scared about. We're back in school. School? This doesn't look like PS 132. Not your school. This is my alma mater. Voyager School. He still doesn't know why they're there, but he's happy to be back. Can't wait to see the old gang. Susan? Hello, Phineas. Very happy. Bog. Bog. Uh, Susan, this is, um... Jeffrey, remember? Jeffrey. <laughs> we know all about the young Mr. Jones. Not so happy to see him. It's obvious he's the bad guy. So, this is the little boy, Voyager, hmm? Oh, stop it, Drake. You're scaring him. Drake was a classmate. We'll learn that he has never actually done a voyage in his life. He's been running a desk and making new rules for the Voyagers that actually, you know, voyage. Looks like a new army. Model 31650, open time calibration, state of the art. But most important, there's a new Voyager credo. Discipline and order above all else. That's the direction the new Voyager majority has mandated. He's been elected chief prosecutor of violations. He's already convicted a bunch of Voyagers, and now he's going after Bog over Jeffrey. Because applying new rules retroactively is so fair. Me? <laughs> what did I do? You've done your duty as a Voyager, but Drake will make it look as if you've subverted the code. He's like Von Karma. He'll win no matter how much evidence he has to fabricate. These are very serious charges, Phineas. But Bog's the best voyager you've got. Many fine men and women have been banished, thanks to Drake. Bog? No, don't worry. The tribunal will be fair. Well, let's hope so. If they find you guilty, you'll be banished. Where? Tiny desert island. Uncharted. The tribunal is coming in. Drake's already got Brindle on his side. Yeah, well, I always figured she twisted her bun a little tight. Hey, that's Professor Garth. The best teacher in the whole school. He really made me understand what being a Voyager is all about. Well, he's your one hope. He's the last elder who stood against Drake. Well, what about him? That's Kane. He respects Garth, but he's still afraid of Drake. Then he shouldn't be on the tribunal. Neither should Brindle. If they already have their minds made up, they're not suitable judges. Drake isn't above using anything he can to win his case. Real hot shot, huh? 30 trials, 30 convictions. Great. I'll just defend myself the best I can. The best we can. I'm your defense attorney. It's time to get started. Is the prosecution ready? Yes, Your Honor. And defense? I haven't had much time with the defendant. If I could have a little time to discuss the evidence... Your Honor, I believe the evidence should be debated openly in this court. Bog has no idea what the evidence is or anything else. Why is Drake afraid to let Susan bring him up to speed? Unless, of course, the accused feels a need for, um, secret meetings to manufacture his defense. She needs to leave. She is not impartial. I don't even know what I'm defending myself against. You won't let him take any time to prepare a defense, and you haven't even told him what he's accused of yet. For a so-called advanced society, their justice system sucks. Will the prosecution please read the charges? I'd be happy to, Your Honor. The defendant, Phineas Bogg, has consistently and purposefully disobeyed all rules and statutes of the Voyager Code. That's nice and vague. You could convict anybody of anything with charges like that. That's a lie. Please keep your client under control. Well, he should have a chance to defend himself. If he can. Let him take the sign. I repeat, this system sucks. A fair system would let him see the evidence against him before he had to step up and testify. But I forgot, these guys are advanced, not like us primitives. The first thing he has to do is give them his Omni. The bailiff puts it in a machine that can read its memory. Now we can get down to specifics. The defendant, Phineas Bogg, violated territorial parameters by traveling to the year 1982. 
A year bog is not authorized to operate in. I was trying to get to 1492. My Omni malfunctioned. His Omni was only designed to go to 1975. So if he went to 1982 deliberately, please explain how he did it. But Drake is one of those guys who thinks shouting you down is a valid method of debate. And did, on that unauthorized mission, enter the room of this boy, Jeffrey Jones, and did lose his guidebook. The Omni reading machine starts up and shows Bog coming into Jeffrey's room and wrestling the dog for the guidebook. Jeffrey explains that Bog didn't lose the book. The dog took it from him. Why were you not able to recover your book? Oh, my hands were kind of full at the time. With what? With Jeffrey. Look. Once again, the machine shows the events, and suddenly it's clear what we're actually watching here, a clip show. Jeffrey says, Bog saved my life. Drake says, if Bog hadn't violated the code in the first place, the boy wouldn't have been in danger. And since these circumstances were caused by uh, a malfunctioning Omni, it would appear that Mr. Bog is blameless. Then who do we blame for the violations? This boy? Not who, what? If you have to assign Blaine, blame the malfunctioning Omni, you twit. The problem is they're all afraid of Drake, so they have to come up with a pound of flesh to feed him. The kid didn't do anything wrong. Not willfully. Which brings us to the most serious charge, the boy being used on Voyager missions. My Omni couldn't get him back home to 1982. He says, what was I supposed to do? There must have been an adequate care facility for the child somewhere in time. An orphanage? Yes. Does Jeffrey have anything to say about this? Or are you superior beings just going to dump him somewhere because he's not important anyway? And by the way, well, I figured he would be better off with me. Then you must be held responsible for that decision. Hello? He has taken responsibility for it. He's watched out for Jeffrey every hour of every day since, and the two have learned to trust each other. How many of you in this room can say the same about another person in this room? That's what I thought. I made Bog take me with him. Nice to know you, kid. Sorry for any inconvenience, but I work alone. Oh, no, you don't. You got me in this, you get me out. They're still going on and on about how he shouldn't have taken one so young on missions that involve matters of such historical importance. Bog explains that Jeffrey is a history encyclopedia. He's better than a guidebook. And unlike that stupid big volume you make voyagers carry around, he can walk by himself. Well, perhaps Mr. Bog's memories are shadowed by sentiment. Huh? The mission in question started in Rome, 44 BC. Caesar had been murdered on the Senate floor, and Voyager Bog took Cleopatra out of the city. Drake is blaming Bog because Cleopatra pushed the button on the Omni and transported them to New York, where she immediately went bonkers, accumulating adorers and stuff. But Jeffrey ended up helping me find her. Then you trust this young man with my life. Well, we can only hope he was more careful with your life than he was with your army. We see a clip of when Thomas Edison took it apart and Jeffrey threw a fit. Never mind that Edison put it back together and it worked better than ever. Drake is having fun manipulating evidence to make everything look as bad as possible. The problem is he's very good at it. Your Honor, all the episodes in question did end successfully. I appreciate the skill and the judgment required in field work, the last minute decisions that must be made. But even in the field, Your Honor, there's no substitute for careful planning and rigid adherence to the rules and regulations. Oh, what do you know about it, Drake? You've been writing a desk ever since graduation. He's gotten where he is by blackmail and deception. He's the worst kind. He keeps talking about how Bog took Jeffrey and Jeffrey keeps saying he did no such thing. I want to be with him. But Bog and Susan seem to be the only ones who care what's in Jeffrey's mind. A good voyager cannot be such a bad companion for a boy. I would agree. If only the boy's life had not been put in jeopardy. Are you charging this voyager with intentional disregard for Jeffrey Jones' safety? Yes. It's a lie. Is a gladiator school a fit place for a young boy? If his job is to fetch water or sweep the floor, sure, why not? It was a common thing for the time. Drake does some fine manipulation of that story. 
He takes us to the fight with the Red Baron and keeps hammering away about how Bog keeps endangering Jeffrey. It's funny how the Omni keeps skipping over the part where Jeffrey won't be left behind. Jeff! Your Honor, I object. No, I object. I object to this man using this boy, a defenseless youngster, to serve his own selfish purposes. It's not true! Make him stop. Oh, using him for selfish purposes like you're doing now, Drake? You couldn't care less whether he lives or dies. You said dump him in an orphanage and let him rot. But it's obvious none of these judges care about Jeffrey either because they're letting him get away with all this. Your Honor, may the defendant have the chance to answer these charges? Oh, yes. But be warned, Phineas Bogg, you have much to answer for. In other words, we've already made up our minds. I move for a mistrial and a new trial in a new venue. And by the way, does he get a little time to confer with his attorney, or does he have to do it all off the cuff, even though Drake has had months to play with all this? Is this how your fair courtroom works? You know, the prosecutor's turning everything around so it looks bad for Bog. He's doing a pretty good job of it, too. Just like he did with all the others. Why doesn't somebody stop him? We're trying to, Jeffrey. But with each conviction, Drake becomes more powerful. Jeffrey says he's a creep and he has some really stupid ideas. Bog says his ideas always were a little off kilter. He's considered the brilliant young maverick now. Brilliant? Phineas, he was class valedictorian. He cheated. Well, I know that sounds like sour grapes, but it's the truth. You don't have to convince me. His evidence always does fall into place a little too neatly. You think he makes up stuff just to get voyagers like Bog in trouble? Unfortunately, what I feel and what I can prove are two different things. Isn't that always the way? The ones who genuinely try to obey the rules and do things honestly are always playing catch-up. But there are more important things than winning an ambition. He's the hotshot prosecutor. I'm just a dumb field worker. You were smart enough to be whatever you wanted. You just never applied yourself. Yeah, Bob, you told me you never paid much attention because there's this really sexy blonde in your class. And... <laughs> Sorry. I'm sure he was talking about somebody else. Really? I never caught you at it. Oh, well, you know me. Subtle, discreet. I wish you'd been a little less subtle. Give a girl a chance. Now he has to win this so he can follow up on that. And apparently that's all the time they get to confer. I'm not sure I like these people. It's time for Bog to testify. We intend to show that Phineas Bog and Jeffrey Jones may have violated the letter, but not the spirit of the Voyager Code. So, Phineas Bog, you find yourself in the field without your Voyager guidebook. Oh, that's right, but I had Jeffrey. Are you telling this tribunal that Jeffrey became your guidebook? Yes. And unlike a static book, Jeffrey can look around and analyze the situation. He can tell you not only the what, but the why. He also has situational awareness. A book doesn't. The Omni demonstrates how Jeffrey has helped him figure out what to do, but Drake says it wouldn't be necessary if he hadn't lost his guidebook. I thought we already covered that. I'm afraid a boy, however bright, cannot equal the knowledge of a Voyager handbook. I'm begging your pardon, sir, but... The kid knows much more than a guidebook. More even than some voyagers. For example? For example, teaching him how to pitch 1982 style so he could convince Babe Ruth to stop pitching and start hitting. Let's see a guidebook do that. Bog says, and Jeffrey isn't afraid of anybody or anything. He'll tell you off to your face and inspire you to have the confidence to give it one more try like he did with J.P. Morgan and Thomas Edison. So the court can see that the boy's fortitude and conviction have served the Voyager Code well. I am impressed with the boy's ability. He does seem to be quite a bit beyond his years. In mind, perhaps. But precocious boys can never be trusted with the work of a man. Yeah, that's true. You'd never trust a precocious boy like Wolfgang Mozart with the work of a man, such as writing music, now would you? That would just be ridiculous. I don't know about that. Uh, there was another time when Jeffrey rescued me from right under the noses of a bunch of witch hunters. Have you ever noticed how with some people, if you've answered all their arguments with specific details and facts, they suddenly retreat into vague generalizations like all politicians are alike or you can't trust a precocious boy with the work of a man 
mind. Even though you've shown specifics that prove their vague generalization is wrong. We watch clips of Jeffrey saving Bog from the fire. Then Drake says, that says less about Jeffrey than it does about Bog's carelessness. He takes us to the Civil War episode where Bog is in a carriage with President and Mrs. Lincoln and the young lady who thinks he's a Southern sympathizer. There's going to be another change in plans. Kate Phillips. Traitor. I can't believe it. Not a traitor, Mr. Lincoln. A patriot. Two patriots, in fact. So... As Phineas Bogg conspired to kidnap Lincoln... Talk about only telling half the story. Why did it stop there? Susan tries to protest, but the judges won't have it. They can only judge on what they see, even though they didn't see the whole story. They don't care what the truth is. They're just following the rules. And there's the problem right there. Now no I shall make a effect. pompous Not speech with lots of impressive Boy words Joe about Phineas the importance Bob. of blah, blah, the blah for the da-da-da-da-da-da. They haven't said what they intend to do with Jeffrey if Bog is found guilty. That might have some bearing on things, but they don't seem to think he needs to know. That superior code thing again. Didn't happen that way, I swear. Yeah, it was Bog that saved Lincoln. How would the army show it like that? I don't know. But somehow Drake always manages to come up with that kind of damaging evidence. The only way he could have come up with something like that is if he messed with the Omni. There's no use arguing with the tribunal. If we're going to have any chance of clearing ourselves, we've got to get out of here. Call Jeffrey to testify. He can verify that the Omni evidence is incomplete. That's one big mistake Susan made, and now it's too late. There's not much they can do except try to speculate how Drake did it. I've always known Drake was capable of anything including perjury, to further his own ambitions. Well, how are we going to make the judges believe that? Sometimes it's very difficult to prove when someone's lying. Bog says in school, everybody knew he cheated, but nobody could prove it until he gave himself away. How? He sure kept track of how he did it. Every time he cheated and got away with it, it was like winning a battle or something. He kept a diary? Yeah. He found all those little notes in a, a copy of The Prince by Machiavelli. Well, did you turn him in? No, I, I didn't want to be a snitch. Just him knowing I knew was enough. It's not enough now. Susan says, I'll be back soon. Where's she going? Uh, I think she's going to try and find something to clear us of the charges. If they don't know what it is, they may be the only two people in all the annals of time who don't. Jeffrey says, I don't think I can take this. First, my parents are ripped away from me, and now you. It's not fair. I was just kidding so I could go through the night without having bad dreams about my folks. <laughs> and now I'm going to have those dreams all over again about you. <laughs> You're not going to have any dreams about me, good or bad. How do you know? Just believe me, you're lucky. I'm not going to remember anything. To Jeffrey, that's worse. He didn't do anything wrong. In fact, he saved the day many, many times. And they're going to punish him anyway by taking away a huge chunk of his life. You mean I'm not going to remember about being a Voyager? Yeah. I suppose I'll forget about the Omni. Yeah, you will. And I'll forget about you? No, Bog. That's not going to happen. I'm never going to let that happen. You can't fight it, kids. The Voyager Code. Jeffrey never signed any bloody code, so it's unreasonable to hold him to it. But we've almost forgotten this is a clip show, so we fill some runtime reflecting on the good times. The court reconvenes. The judge announces that Drake has come up with some new evidence that puts a whole new spin on things. Before Bog can see it, Jeffrey has to leave the room. The new information involves the boy. Jeffrey's never done a truly bad thing in his life. No, it's not a matter of the good of the bad that he has done, but of the good he has yet to do. See for yourself. Drake has several pages of things that Jeffrey is destined to do. But as civilian, Jeffrey Jones, not as a voyager, and in his own time, not traveling through the cosmos with an omni. I'm afraid Drake is right. The boy must be returned to 1982. He must be allowed to grow up and fulfill his own destiny. Well, let's tell the boy and get on to more important matters. It's nice to know she doesn't consider the impact this will have on Jeffrey important. Please tell me she never had kids. No, I'll tell him. And I'll take him back. 
Very well. The boy will be returned to the room where Bog found him. No. Why, Javag, I thought it was determined that the boy will be returned. Yes, but not as an orphan. I want to bring him back to the time before his parents died. Oh, Your Honor, this is absurd. The boy must be returned to the exact time and place Bog found him. Why? Look, Drake, you can take your gripe out on me, but don't ruin the kid's life. Would it change history if just parents were spared? Oh, that is hardly the point. Then what's the point? The point is Drake getting everything he wants and you getting nothing. The cruelty is the point. If he'll be this cruel with an 11-year-old boy, imagine what he'd do if he dug up dirt on a judge. No. History will not change if the boy is returned to his parents. Then there's no reason the court should not show leniency. You mean pity. Look, as long as history doesn't change, why can't we make his life a little bit happier? What difference is it going to make? you got to make this exception. Once an exception is made, the code will be meaningless. And what about the Voyager code? This tribunal was called to uphold the rules, not violate the... Drake? That's just one more lie. Guess who found the book? She presents it to the judges. Hmm. What does Machiavelli got to do with all this? Machiavelli's philosophy was the end justifies the means. These are not the writings of Machiavelli. Those were written by his best disciple, Voyager Drake. It's a sordid record. False documents, tampering with the omni-reading machine, outright lies to convict innocent voyagers. Of course, now he wants to claim it's inadmissible. But as we've seen, this court operates by some rather convoluted rules. Why, Drake? Why? Because it had to be done for the cause. The only cause you ever served was your own. Take his omni away. And why would you be foolish enough to keep this incriminating evidence? One day, those words will vindicate me and all the work that I've tried to do. The future shall judge me as a hero. Until then, you'll deal with the judgments of this tribunal. And they shall be hard. Take his omni away. This court has no hold on me. Bailiff, stop that man. Get his omni before he can use it. Hey, wait a minute. You're not going anywhere. Stop him. <laughs> I told you to take his Omni away. Bob, the Omni! Don't worry, I got it. Oh, give it to me. It's a fast hot shot. A little late, but it'll do for now. Hand me that Omni immediately. We've got to get out of here. Look, Drake, we're going to check things out before we run scared. Red light. Where are we? Mexico, 1836. Bob, look! Senor Houston. Do you wish a blindfold? Yes, Sam Houston himself. First president of the Republic of Texas after the Mexican War. Gotta rescue him. I'll get Mr. Houston. You stay here with him. Bog? The code does mean something. Voyager doesn't leave a fallen comrade. Even if his fall was just another lie, while they fight, a rebel Texan tries to throw some dynamite, but it lands right next to Houston. Nobody saw it except Jeffrey. Someone help! The boy is trapped! Oh! Help! Help the boy! Hurry! I'm okay! Get the dynamite! Drake took the opportunity to Omni out of there, and there's no way to tell where he went. Great. Now we're really stranded. No Omni and no guidebook. Yeah, but we've got each other. Then I guess we'll get along just fine. The following year, they headed west along the Oregon Trail. Both died of dysentery. Well, Bob, where do we start? The first thing I want to do is get something to eat. Not so fast, guys. Well, how do you know where to find us? Woman's intuition and my Voyager locator. Back in wherever it is, there are a few revelations. Sir, I can explain. No, See, there's no need. It's this court that owes you an apology. Now, where's Drake? He took the Omni and disappeared. Well, he must be brought back to this tribunal. Well, he's somewhere out there in time. Huh? He doesn't scan on the locator. Of course he doesn't. He's the type that will always find a way to cheat. You're really consistent, Smith. You know that? In what way? What ain't a losing doesn't matter to you. Just as long as you can cheat. So that's what Drake looked like when he got older. Well, someone's bound to find him wherever things are getting messed up. Well, maybe it will be the two of you. Us? Yes. 
You mean bogging me? Yeah, voyages, aren't you? Oh, we were waiting for you to tell us if we were or not. He says, you're both voyagers. Congratulations. What about all the great stuff Jeffrey's supposed to do? Drake was correct. The boy has many important things to do. But what Drake didn't tell the court was that he does them as a voyager. If he's like most 11-year-old boys, the first great thing he'll want to do is wash his face. He was supposed to be a voyager. That's why Bog wound up in his room. Here is your old Omni. Yeah, we're partners again. Here's your new guidebook. No offense, but that thing is as big as some large print Bibles. I know, I used to sell them. Jeffrey is much more efficient, and when Bog talks to him, he answers back. Let's see your guidebook do that. 